Happy New Year and welcome to the very first episode of the podcast of 2023. Hope you guys had an amazing end to 2022 and I hope you're ready for an even better 2023. I got a great show lined up for y'all today. We have Peter Burns joining the podcast. If you don't know who Peter Burns is, you will after today's episode. And I'm guessing you probably don't watch college football or you're not an avid sports fan. Well, maybe you should be. Maybe your New Year's resolution should be to start watching college football or start watching sports because it is fun. Might take a few years off your life, though, if you have a team like mine that tends to disappoint quite frequently. But oh well. Anyway, Peter Burns works for ESPN and the SEC Network. Great analyst, great host, great commentator. I am super excited to have him on the podcast today. We are going to talk all things college football playoffs, dive into the TCU Michigan game, the Georgia Ohio State game, and then preview the national championship. Of course, you could have guessed that. After that, so if you don't like sports, you can just fast forward right through that. Although I don't recommend doing that. What's the fun in that? There's not. So just try to give it a listen. After that, I am going to chat with you guys about the new year and new year's resolutions. I'm sure you have some. If you don't, well, you're one of few. Tons of people out there make those new year's resolutions. I'm one of them, but I've kind of cut back a little bit on the amount I have because just having 400 is slightly, slightly unrealistic. Maybe 399 is acceptable. All right, let's cut to my conversation with Peter Burns. Welcome to Trash the Game Plan podcast, Peter. First guest of 2023. Thanks for being here. Uh, I appreciate it, Maddie. It's been too long. We've been trying to connect and finally get an opportunity. And I love the neon sign there, the Trash the Game Plan podcast, man. I, I, I need to get that done for, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here in my uh at makeshift studio here at my house and uh i need i need to get something like that that looks actually pretty cool well thank you christmas present just got it up there you go looks good looks good well thanks let's jump right in and talk some college football this past weekend the college football semifinals i thought this was the most entertaining set of semifinals that we've had thus far in the playoff system what do you think yeah, I mean, again, I think that when we envision the college football playoff uh, launching what now, gosh, since back in 2014, we were kind of hoping that we would get stuff like this. And sure enough, it was um, everything we wanted it to be, you know, from the, that first game in the Fiesta Bowl with TCU with a huge upset over Michigan. And and then you start thinking, oh, my goodness, like there's no way uh, that we're going to get another get great game. And the fact that like legitimately the ball was kicked in 2022 and the ball lands in 2023 was just it, it was it was out of a movie like in fact if you wrote a movie script about those games there's no way that hollywood would even accept the script because they're like no that's too cheesy like no one's going to actually believe it and now it sets up a hell of a, a championship game because i don't know about you but i you know i saw tcu um with I mean, they looked every bit of a a national championship contender and their speed was really impressive in that Fiesta Bowl. A lot of people, including myself, were surprised by TCU, but I was impressed. Were you surprised or did you think they would put up a fight against Michigan? Um, I, I mean, I knew that they were going to put up a fight against Michigan. Sonny Dykes is a really good coach. And then, you know, Max Duggan just kind of has that that dog in him as far as a mentality. But, um, you know, I, I think what helped them, Maddie, was the fact that they had been involved in a lot of tussles all season long. Like they had been down in games that they had battled, that they did. They believed in themselves, the amount of comebacks. I think they were down in like six or seven games this season. So it wasn't foreign to them. For Michigan, they never really had to face that adversity. They didn't really play a tough uh, out-of-conference schedule. They were ahead in every single one of their games, so they never had that kind of, "Uh uh-oh, we got punched in the mouth, how are we going to respond moment. Um, And, I mean, even Georgia had those moments against Kent State and Kentucky and, of course, the Missouri game to where you're like, all right, you need to to kind of, you know, get after it. They never necessarily had that over at Michigan, and – and now it could be even more chaotic that if, you know, Jim Harbaugh gets offered an NFL job, does he leave and does the Michigan job open? So there's a lot of, uh, of a butterfly effect uh, happening right now because of that game. There could be some drama. 
TCU opened as seven and a half point underdogs. Their victory marked the first win by a Big 12 team in the playoff era. What do you think that says about the system we have in place? I mean, again, I think the system is good. I I think even bigger picture, it gave me an idea that the committee has done a pretty good job year to year of selecting the right teams. Like I can't recall many years that there was a lot of chaos. Now, a lot of times it's already kind of worked itself out. So the committee has some pretty easy decisions. And, you know, like this year, Bama having two losses versus uh, versus Ohio State only having one. Well, that kind of made the decision easy for them. But um, ultimately, I think they got the right four correct. And now I'm starting to think about it going, all right, if we have finally two good semifinal games, does this lead us to a really, you know, a lot more parity in college football when we have a 12-team playoff? I I don't know, right? Like if Georgia wins it, um, we're still going to be looking at one of the, you know, well, uber one percenter teams that actually win the national championship. So, you know, the, the cream still rose to the top. But if TCU wins it, I think that completely changes our mindset of what is available in college football. And I think that's great for the sport because then you can take a team that was, what, four or five wins, turn it around in one year and actually beat the behemoths of the sport. Like, I think that would that would interject a lot of, of, of blood and, and, and lifelines into a lot of programs throughout college football. I agree. I do want to bring up the fact that in this Michigan TCU game, there was some controversial officiating, particularly the second quarter with Roman Wilson's touchdown pass being overturned. And then in the final minute of the game with potential targeting on TCU's behalf. What did you think about these calls? Yeah, uh, it's such a bang, bang play. And again, I go back and look and I I was surprised, not necessarily so much with the targeting. I was more surprised with the touchdown pass being overturned uh, early in the game, because a lot of times you think of it going, all right, yeah, they'll overturn it. But if they got it on the one yard line, clearly they're just going to punch it in. And sure enough, you know, another boneheaded decision by Michigan not only for the fourth and goal that they went for it on the reverse pass early in the game, but the fact that then they start like a quick handoff to a fullback who was a linebacker midway through the season, like that didn't make any sense. So um, I, I think, you know, what I'm, what I'm understanding is that, you know, it's hard to be an official and we now have access to social media. We have access to 19,000 different feeds and, and we can slow it down in real time with them to where they're, they have a hard job and they're going to make mistakes. And it's not just an SEC thing. It's not just a Pac-12 thing. It's just human officials in general that have some issues. So, um, again, I, <laughs> no way to put it. It was just uh, weird calls that, uh, that could have gone either way in that game. Yeah, I think we just, as fans, can't expect anything in terms of officiating. Hey, if we were doing it, we wouldn't be perfect either. If the fans were doing it, they couldn't. So I think ultimately it shouldn't have to just come down to two plays for a team to win. I think that's what we learned there. Yeah, I mean, I remember Greg Popovich when I covered him with the San Antonio Spurs, like there would be some games late into the season to where, you know, all of a sudden they got one or two bad calls late. And I would always ask Pop, like, well, you know, what did you make of the call? And he goes, honestly, if we were good enough to win the game, the call shouldn't be, you know, the call shouldn't matter. Now, that's a little different because they were such monster plays in that game. And Michigan damn sure played good enough to play and win in that game. But um, listen, man, we're all we're all human. And even having replay doesn't mean necessarily you're going to get 1000 percent of people uh, agreeing in your, uh, you know, what what you think and your conclusion. Exactly. TCU was able to put up 51 points on a defense that was allowing just 13.4 points on average this season. What's it going to take for the Horn Frogs to be able to do this against Kirby Smart's defense Monday night? Yeah, I think it's going to be you saw Max Johnson and, and Quentin Johnson, who they're, who's going to be a star on the wide rec- uh, on the NFL level as a wide receiver. I think. It, it takes quick plays. And we saw some of that, especially that third quarter was crazy. I went back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, we saw TCU um, get a pick six and we saw them with a the fumble recovery and we saw them with a, with a, a huge play in order to beat Georgia. I don't think you can beat Georgia Maddie by just kind of, you know, you know, chipping away at them. I think in order to beat a team like Georgia, that's very sound is you have to have three or four, just monstrous momentum plays. 
and TCU was able to find that against Michigan. I don't know if they can still and replicate that come Monday night in the national championship game. Um, they're, they're capable of it, but to, to bank on three or four explosive plays against a Georgia team is, is a pretty tough task. And I think that's the reason why odds makers have them as almost a 14 point favorite for the championship. Yep. Last year, Georgia had arguably the best defense in college football history. This year, they're still one of the best in the country, but not nearly as dominant. Yeah, I think that's, you know, and I think Kirby understands that. I think Georgia fans understand that. But I, you'd also say that I think that they believe in Stetson Bennett more so than ever. I mean, him 10 of 12 in the fourth quarter for the 189 yards and the touchdown, like, I don't know if Setson Bennett makes those plays last year, right? Um, so I think offensively, they're in a better spot than they were. So what you take out of the, the defensive aspect of it, you're actually adding on to the offensive element of it. So I just think it's really impressive the job that Kirby Smart has done. Um, in, in losing so much, you didn't end up having one player come in the transfer portal, and yet you're on the cusp of back-to-back -back national championships. I mean, you know, Maddie, we start thinking about this. If he wins a title, that'll give him two national championships by the age of 47. Nick Saban didn't get his second until he was 57 years old. Like, he'll have a full decade ahead of where Nick Saban was when he got his second. Now, I'm not saying that Kirby Smart's going to surpass, you know, Nick Saban as the greatest coach in the history of the game. But with Kirby Smart probably not going to go coach in the NFL. Kirby Smart doesn't probably want to coach anywhere other than Georgia. They want to build a statue in, in front of him. He played for him. There's a chance that this is just the mark of a, of a new dynasty um, and they become the gold standard of college football. It pains me as a Florida Gator fan to agree with that, but there is no denying Kirby Smart, what he is building at Georgia is incredibly impressive. And in my eyes, it looks like the University of Georgia is the next University of Alabama when it comes to college football. Yeah, I think that's that's what's happening because I think he can recruit well. He's bringing – I mean, look at the transfer portal too. He just brought in Ra Ra Thomas from Mississippi State and Dominic Lovett, two very good wide receivers. And um, I think one of the things – you know, we talk so much about coaches and are they right for this job, this and that. I think Kirby had to learn how to win. And I think, you know, he learned a lot of lessons early in his career and even learned a lot of how not to coach in 2017. But he took it from those experiences and learned. And one of the things I think was very important was Kirby in 2020 in the pandemic. And I, I, the reason why I say that is that, you know, I think at some point he connected with his players more so than ever, more so than he might have done in, in the past. And um, I think that connection led to him understanding his team a little bit more. Combine that with after he got finally one championship under his belt, I, then I think he was like, all right, I'm not chasing it. I don't have to go too hard. I just got to support these guys and coach them up, and we can do really special things. And I think that's why you're seeing him grow the way he's done. Yeah, watching the Georgia-Ohio State game, for a while it looked like Ohio State was going to walk away with the win, but they didn't. Georgia got it done, and during that game, I noticed myself just looking at the Georgia sideline. All I saw was poise and confidence. Do you have any concerns for them as they try to defend the title Monday night? Um, yeah, because, you know, there's always going to be some concern if Stetson Bennett does not play up to par. And I think Stetson would be the first person to tell you that that wasn't. I mean, you could just see it on his face and even in his postgame interviews. But, you know, and I and I saw people, Maddie, that were talking about, you know, Kirby Smart was pretty critical of Stetson's play in that game. And people are like, oh, was Kirby too hard on Stetson? I go, no, I think he was just perfect because he he trusts Stetson. Stetson trusts him. And it's like, all right, you know, it's like your dad almost being being upset with you. Like, OK, your dad can be harsh because you love him. He loves you and you're all in the same in, in the same boat. So, um, yeah, as long as Stetson plays within himself, um, I think I think that there's definitely a talent differential for Georgia to TCU. And if they play a clean ball game, this shouldn't be a close game in my mind. This should be a. 35 to 17 national championship game. Um, but, you know, then again, you know, TCU has shocked the college football world so far, but I, I'm definitely leaning more towards a double digit dogs victory than a, than a TCU uh, upset win. 
That makes sense on paper, but you never know. I know you got to run in just a minute, Peter, but I'm going to leave you on this one question. The 2022 college football season is practically over. It's now 2023. You're currently on Trash the Game Plan podcast. So which college football team needs to trash their game plan before next fall? Oh, that's a man. What a great question. I, I would say it's Texas A&M. And uh, you know, mostly because the game plan, at least offensively, has not been great, um, to say the least. And that's probably being kind. And so, you know, that's one of the kind of the New Year's resolutions we joke around about with, with Jimbo Fisher is like, hey, I think Jimbo's a really good coach. I think he can run a program. I think he also needs to give the keys up to calling the offense so he can go out there and find uh, a, a good play caller that's going to fit the scheme because they have good players. They've got a great fan base. They have a home field advantage. They got a great quarterback in Connor Wigman. I, I believe in that young man and what I saw late into the season, especially in the LSU win. So um, if I'm trashing the game plan for one uh, for one team right now, it's going to be Texas A&M uh, going forward. And, uh, and that's just going to make the SEC West and the SEC just that much tougher. Good answer. Can't argue with that. Thanks for being here, Peter. Appreciate your time. Love talking college football with you. Take care. Maddie, have a good one. Hope you guys enjoyed that conversation with Peter diving into all things college football playoff related. Not going to lie, I did want to keep him a bit longer and touch on his path and his journey to ESPN because no, he didn't just graduate college and land there, although that would be pretty amazing and remarkable. But he's a busy guy. What are you going to do? I'm sure he's got bigger priorities than hopping on trash the game plan. But all jokes aside, Peter is awesome. So happy I could have him on today. Maybe we'll get him back as a returning guest. Let's talk now about New Year. New Year's. What'd y'all do? Let me know. I was fortunate enough to take a little getaway with my boyfriend. We went up to Hilton Head Island and Savannah for the weekend just to get away, close out the new year together. Not close out the new year. You can't do that close out 2022 together and then start 2023. It was fun. A lot of fun. If you haven't been to Savannah, Georgia and Hilton Head, you should go because Savannah, first off, is a very cool historic city. Lots to do, lots to see. Unfortunately, the weather was pretty crappy the whole time we were there, but it was still nice to be away. It wasn't freezing. It was probably about like 50 or 60. Now y'all are laughing at me up north for complaining about the temperature being 50 or 60, but it was that mist and drizzle that makes it feel even colder. So yeah, the weather wasn't working for me, but I guess that's what you get when you go somewhere in the middle of winter. Still, there's tons of great restaurants. My boyfriend had to get beignets. There's this place called Huey's on the river. I'm not going to lie. They are pretty amazing. They're the only place I've had beignets in my life, so I guess I can't really compare them, but they are quite delicious. Then in Hilton Head, which the weather was also pretty crappy there, so we unfortunately couldn't enjoy the beach or anything like that that you would usually do in Hilton Head, but we still ate a ton of yummy food. There's this food there called low country food because you're in the low country, obviously, went to this place called Low Country Backyard Restaurant. Shout out to them because that was such a cool vibe. Twinkly lights, live live music, even in the rain, sitting in almost like this backyard. Yes, that's why it's called Low Country Backyard. Bunch of Southern food, bunch of seafood. I'm not a huge seafood person, but the guy I was with, my boyfriend ate a bunch of stuff that I don't remember that was seafood. We did try the crab dip. It was pretty, pretty decent. He liked it more than I did. And then I got a shrimp BLT salad with candied bacon. Oh my gosh. Technically I ate that in 2022. So that doesn't ruin my 2023 diet. Just kidding. Candied bacon. That was my first time having it. That stuff tasted like crack. So good. Oh my gosh. And I discovered that I love fried green tomatoes some fried green tomatoes on that salad too. Mm, It was delicious. So hope you guys had a great New Year's Eve, great new year, ready to kick off 2023 strong. So let's talk resolutions. Tons of people make all these resolutions, which frankly are just goals for the new year. So if you don't, if you didn't make any new year's resolutions, 
it's okay because I'm a firm believer that you can set a goal anytime you want. Doesn't have to be December 31st or January 1st. You can do it whenever you want. Break the rules. But I did make a couple for myself. I usually make a lot and that's just too much. My one goal for 2023, I'm not sure if it's a goal or what, is to just do more of what I want to do. Stop doing things I don't want to do. I want to live a life that is filled with more joy and more peace. I want to stop doing things I don't want to do because life is short. We should truly just enjoy the moments. And I know that is easier said than done. Trust me. 2022, I spent probably about 95% of that entire year worrying about my life, worrying about the future, worrying about the food I ate, worrying about when am I going to get a job? How am I going to get a job? I still worry about that. I mean, that's life. You can't not have any worries, but I truly want to spend more time this year just enjoying the moment, being present, doing what I want, because God forbid, we don't know, we don't know how long our lives are going to be. Life is short and we need to spend it with the people we love and doing the things we like. So if I want the cake on a Monday night on January 3rd, I might break that New Year's resolution. My New Year's resolution wasn't to eat better, so I wouldn't technically be breaking it, but you get the point. Eat what you want, do what you want, because life is short. But speaking of like eating better and being healthier, we should all want to be healthier because the healthier we are, the longer we can live. Probably. Science says that. Research says that. I'm not just pulling that out of my behind. But I do want to share some exercise programs that I love for those of you who are trying to be more active this year and get back in the gym and work on your fitness. I do want to exercise still pretty consistently, not any more than last year, honestly, but just keep up with it. Feel good. So I am a avid YouTube workout user. This is probably geared towards the females, but I do nourish, move, love all the time. Lindsay Baumgren, sorry if I said it wrong, the last name kind of throws me. She's amazing and I love her. She has a ton of workouts and makes new programs all the time. She just came out with this, I think it's called Fit 20 or something. That's right, 20. They are 20 minute workouts. We all have 20 minutes to spare to work on our fitness. I know we'd rather be sitting on the couch or playing on our phone. You probably spend 20 minutes on social media a day. You know you do. Just take 20 minutes, get that workout in. You'll probably feel a lot better. Even if you don't feel better in the moment, your body, the insides, they're probably thanking you. So Lindsay Baumgren, most of her workouts are strength training. She does have some cardio in there. You'll find some bar yoga stretching too, but the majority are strength because her motto and what she tries to emphasize and prioritize is the fact that Our metabolism slows down as we get older. Strength training is the only way to speed it up. So build those muscles, ladies. Work on those muscles. You're not going to get bulky. You're going to get stronger. You're going to get leaner. And you're not going to have to work out as much. You burn more calories doing cardio than you do strength training. But in the long run, your metabolism speeds up. So when I'm sitting on that couch eating that piece of cake after I do the strength training, I'm still burning the calories. That's my little rant on why I should do strength training and still eat the cake. But yeah, love Nourish Move Love. Also like Pop Sugar. Chloe Ting is pretty decent. Those are more low impact. They even have like 10 minute ones. So those are pretty good too. Another thing I am going to keep up with this year is taking walks. So even if you don't really love to exercise, maybe your New Year's resolution is just to walk more. So simple. Can get outside, enjoy nature, and just be present in the moment in your surroundings. Taking walks is pretty darn awesome. That's another common New Year's resolution. Most of them are health and fitness related, let's be real. The other day, my boyfriend texted me and was like, I'm at the gym. There are way too many people here. I'm like, don't worry. They'll be gone in two weeks after they forget those resolutions. It's okay though, because like I said, you can set a goal anytime you want. It doesn't have to be a new year. Another one, I told you guys, one of my goals is just to do more of what I want and be present. 
Another goal, obviously, you could probably guess, is to land a full-time job by the end of this year. I don't want it to take this year, but you never know. It's God's timing. It's God's plan, like they say. And it is. I know I can only do so much and the cards will fall where they fall and eventually things will work out. In terms of what I got planned for this year, well, just keep at it. Keep grinding. Keep working hard. I don't have any ginormous plans. I'm trying to work on the, the English. It's hard. I'm trying to work on just being more spontaneous and going with the flow. It's something I'm not really good at. I tend to plan everything and there's nothing wrong with liking to have a plan, but sometimes you just got to be like, all right, let's trash the game plan and just go where life takes you. So this year, I'm really just trying to see what happens, go with the flow and just be happy as cliche as that sounds. So if y'all have any advice for me on that, how to go with the flow, let me know because because I could use it. And if you would like any advice on anything that you think I might have some advice for, feel free to reach out. But I am very excited to keep this podcast going. We got a new sign in case you noticed. Got it for Christmas. I absolutely love it. One of those neon lighted title sign things in case you're not watching and you're just listening. But I hope I'm persuading you to pull up YouTube right now and watch so that you can see how cool it looks. Shout out to my parents and my boyfriend for getting this done and fabulous for me. Looks so professional and fabulous. And yeah, can't wait to keep up the podcast for y'all. Let me know what you want more of this year in 2023. Maybe you have a specific guest in mind that you'd like me to have on the podcast. I ain't afraid to send messages or blankly email people. So feel free to drop their name. You never know. I could get them on the podcast for you. So send me that message and let me know what you want to hear. Again, happy new year, guys. Thanks for tuning in to the first episode of the podcast for 2023. Hope you guys have an amazing first week of 2023.